11, right click and paste it 1, 2, 3. The amount being for 14,000 in this case. If we debit something 14,000, we're also going to credit something 14,000. So I'm going to go and sell E12 negative for the credit for this worksheet. 12,000. Uh, no commas or anything. We'll push enter and that will format the cell with the brackets. And then we just need to know what that account should be here. And of course, why are people going to pay us 12,000? I'm sorry, 14,000 should be negative 14,000. So why are people going to pay us 14,000 in the future? Because we did work and earned revenue or income or sales, depending on what we do. We can call it whatever we want, but it's in the revenue section and it's going to be a revenue type account, meaning it has a credit balance and revenue accounts generally only go up. So how are we going to make it go up? We're going to do the same thing to it, which of course is another credit. So we're going to credit the, the revenue account. We always credit revenue. It only gets credited. So we're going to copy that. We're going to put that on the bottom in C12, right click and paste it one, two, three. So then let's post this out again. We're going to post it to our three locations. So let's first post it to our trial balance. So we're going to go into the receivable. There's a zero in it. So we don't want to delete the zero, even though it's a zero, because I know there's two things in it. There's D5 plus E9. And I'm going to double click on it, go to the end of it. And so, and then go plus and point to the new receivable 14. That way we can see the activity in there. When we hit enter, we goes up by 14 takes us out of balance by 14. We can then see the activity that is in there like so. And then we're going to post the other side to the revenue. Once again, something's in it. E6, E6 is in it. So we can double click on it, go to the end of it, and then say plus and point to the revenue, the credit of the 14. What's going to happen? It's going to take revenue up uh, by the 14, put us back in balance. So revenue, which is the credit minus the debits, is now went up to 137,855. All right, so now we're going to post this same thing out to the receivable accounts. Uh, this was Adams down here, so we're going to be down here in the receivables in the debit side. I'm going to post this same activity out. Say Adam owes us money. So now we can answer the question. If we say uh, who owes us money, how much do people owe us? Fourteen thousand says on the trial balance. Who owes us fourteen thousand? Well, we're going to have to look at the subsidiary ledger, and we can see now that Adams is the one that owes us the 14000 We also will have that activity by uh, date on the GL for all accounts. So on the GL, we can post that same activity. It would look like this for the receivable equals the 14000 and enter. And now, of course, the receivables uh, in the general ledger ties out to the receivable on the subsidiary ledger, ties out to the receivables on the trial balance. So all that activity is there. And once again, note that we would have a receivable account for all the trial balance. I mean, a general ledger account for all the trial balance accounts as well. All right, so let's see what the next one is. We got deep performed work on account and invoice the client Ryan. So same activity. We did work and we invoiced the client. So is cash affected? No, uh, we invoiced the client. We haven't got the cash yet, but we did the work and therefore people owe us money. The account that people owe us money uh, is represented by the accounts receivable account. It has a debit balance represented by the fact that it has no brackets in the number. And we need to make it go up because people owe us more money. How do we make it go up? We do the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. So I'm going to copy this one. I'm going to put that on top again. The amount being 27000 If we debit something, we're also going to have to credit something. So I'm going to put a negative 27,000 in E15 and enter. That'll put brackets around it. Then what should that account be? Uh, well, why are people going to pay us 27,000? Because we did work and therefore earned revenue again. So we earned revenue. We can see that revenue has a credit balance. Revenue only goes up. We're going to make it go up again by doing the same thing to it, which in this case would be another credit, which we already knew because we debited the receivable. So there's the credit we're going to credit it to. And so let's copy that and put that in the credit side of our journal entry. All right, so let's post this out. And of course, the two accounts we're focusing on are having a lot of activity in them. But uh, let's post that out again. We got 14,000 here. If we double click on it, we can see what is in there. So of course, this is what's in there. And now we're going to go to the end of it after the uh, D11 and say plus and point to the 27,000, which of course will make the receivable go up again by 27,000 put us out of balance down here. 
And then we're going to post the other side of it to the receivable, double clicking on the receivable, go to the end of it and plus, and then point to uh, the revenue. Sorry, the other side of it is revenue. And the revenue, of course, will go up in the credit direction, bringing net income up and putting us back in balance here. So there we have that. We're going to post this out once again to our subsidiary ledger. We can see our question. Uh, who, how much do people owe us? 41,000. Well, who owes us 41,000? Well, then we're going to go to our subsidiary ledger over here and say, well, Adam owes us. And then we have uh, Ryan, who we need to record over here in P9. So P9, we're going to say equals that same 27,000 needs to be recorded there. And now we have the, the 20, um, uh, 27 by Ryan. And the total adds up to, of course, the 41, which is on the trial balance. We will also have this activity by uh, date on the general ledger. Not as useful in this particular type of account, which is why we need the extra ledger of the subsidiary ledger by client. But the activity for all accounts will be represented in the general ledger by date. So we're going to go by date. We're going to be in cell T12. T12 equals the same activity. So I'm just going to post that same debit, bringing this 14 up in the debit direction because the same thing makes it go up. And there we have that. Let's take a look at the last one here. We're going to say receive cash on account from Adams. So now Adams is going to pay us this 14 that we billed them in the past. That's what we expect to happen. We, we invoiced them and then we received a check in the mail. That's nice. So then we are going to say, well, is cash affected? Yes, cash is affected. We just got the check. Cash is going to go up. Cash has a debit balance. We make something go up by doing the same thing to it. In this case, that would be another debit. A debit and a debit are the same thing, making the debit go up. Copying that, right-clicking, pasting, one, two, three. So that's going to be the 14,000. Then we're going to credit something, of course. 14,000. I'm going to represent the credit with a negative for this worksheet. 14,000. And then we just need to know what account we're going to credit. Well, why did people pay us 14000 Because we did work. And we did earn revenue, but we earned revenue in the past. And people already, we already recorded that revenue up here. Now we need to see the fact that we also recorded up here the receivable. That represents the fact that people owe us money. That now needs to go down because somebody paid us money. That has a debit balance in it. And how do we make something go down? We do the opposite thing to it, which in this case would be a credit. And we already knew that we were going to credit it because we debited cash. So there's the credit right there that we will credit it for. So what is happening? Receivables will go down. We're losing one asset, but we're gaining a better asset, that asset being cash. So I'm going to copy the receivable. We're going to post that underneath in C18. Right click and paste it. One, two, three. Okay, then we're going to post this out. So let's post this out. We're going to post cash. Cash has something in it. So I'm going to double click on it. We're going to go to the end of it and say plus. And so I can see what's in there there. And I'm going to put this 14 in there as well. What's that going to do? Increase cash. Put us out of balance. So there we have that. Then we're going to record the receivable. So here's the receivable in I6. Double clicking on I6. Going to the end of it, it's getting kind of long, I see that, but uh, we can see everything that's in there. And we're going to go to the end, say plus, and then point to that 14,000. And then when we hit enter, what's going to happen? The receivable is going to go down because it has a debit balance. It's going to go down and puts us back in balance down here. So now we can see the receivable. If, we, if someone asks us, if our boss asks us, if we're the owner and we're asking, who owes us money or how much do people owe us? People owe us 27,000. Well, who owes us 27000 And of course, we're going to have to look at the subsidiary ledger for that. We need to record this same activity for the subsidiary. Adams down here is the one who paid us the 14000 So we're going to go into the credit side for Adams. And we are in cell M17 equals. And we're going to point to that 14000 over here. That will bring the 14 down by 14 to 0. So Adams no longer owes us the uh, money. We can see that, that all the subsidiary ledger accounts now add up to 27000 Just what Ryan owes us, that ties out to the trial balance. And of course, this information would be on the general ledger as well, and it would be recorded by date. So we need to record that as well in the general ledger for accounts receivable. So I'm going to say the same activity equals the, the 14000 here, bringing the 47 down by the 14 to the 27. So the 27 in the GL ties out to the 27 in 
the subsidiary ledger ties out to the 27 in the trial balance. Also note that if we look at the GL, we can see the, the activity being the fact that uh, the same thing makes it go up, the opposite thing makes it go down. So we see that we have the debit side here are always going to win because it's an asset account. And you could think of it kind of a race that we're saying, who you know, it's the debits against the credits. Which ones are going to win and how much are they going to win by? Well, we already know the debits are always going to win because it's an asset account. So therefore, the credit makes it go down. So the 35 minus the credit makes it uh, go down. Then we're going to say plus the debit makes it go back up to the 14. Then plus the debit makes it go up to 47. And then we say minus the credit makes it go down to 27. Other way we can think about it is, of course, the debits add up to a total of uh, 76,000 minus the credits, which add up to the 49,000. If you subtract those two out, you get the 27,000. So that's how the activity will work in the GL. That same activity is a little bit more difficult to see in the subsidiary ledger because it is, of course, broken out in a bit more detail by customer. And of course, we can see the summary of that same activity in the trial balance by just taking a look at what is being included here. So the debit making it go up, credit making it go down, debit making it go up, debit making it going up, credit making it go down.